Fallujah later lost on time, which was tragic really, but he might be completely winning in this uh, bishop ending. He is three pawns up after all. Carlsen has just won the World Blitz, beating Nakamura in a tiebreak. In this video, we will look at a few key moments in the tournament. First up is his game against Bador Hobaba. Let's quickly take it from the opening, b3, g6, bishop b2, knight f6, and take, take, c4, d5. Already, this is very interesting for me. Doubled f pawns, but the bishop on f8, it won't go to g7 anymore. It'll go to d6, it'll go along this diagonal. Take, take, it's like a Scandinavian. Here, I was thinking even queen d6, and then a6, and then playing this way. Carlsen chose to put the queen on a5, and then here, bishop d6, and then and then castling soon, b4, queen d8, attacking the pawn chain with a5. Now, let's go to the key moment near the end, because it becomes a drawn ending, but then Magnus gets a tactical shot in. Check king up finding a way to attack the rook, but really swapping the rooks off. Take, take, and it looks like a draw. How can black make progress? Welp, keep your eyes open. Tactical shot coming up. Knight c3 to stop king d5, f6, g5, g4, and there's a problem. All the pawns are on dark squares, but Horbava's argument is there's no way to come in. King here, bishop here. Knight b1 looks innocent enough, but unfortunately this is the losing move, giving Magnus one shot and he plays it. Bishop to b4. How unfortunate is that? You can't go king takes because a2. And if you do not play the move Hobava played in the game, which is knight c3, if you play another move like king a2 or knight a3, then bishop e1. But knight c3 still uh, loses. Perhaps Horbava was thinking after knight c3, it will still be a draw. But that is not true here, because Magnus now plays a deflection a2. Chess is so harsh. If king takes a2, you drop your knight. And then here, if king b4, you get a queen. And as in the game, knight takes a2, bishop e1, and all the pawns are on dark squares. This is very unfortunate, and it leads to a winning endgame. It's White's up a pawn here, but it doesn't matter because two pawns will fall very soon. King there, take, check, take the other one, take, and then let's get the G and the H marching. H3, and there's no way to stop the H pawn queening. Next tactical moment I want to look at, Castle against Soko. Let's quickly look at the opening, Queen's Indian, and C5, and now, Already very interesting, pawn sacrifice, take, 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 knight c3, taking with tempo, but white has so much control of the light squares. e3, controlling the dark squares, stopping g5, queen a4 with rook d1, and tactical moment coming up, take, rook e8, king g2, planning rook g1 maybe, knight e7, here we go. Now throughout this game, it's been 20 moves so far, but uh, black's up a pawn, but you can't even move the guy. What's the point in being up an extra pawn when you can't move it? Dodgy openings are expected in blitz games anyway. Knight e7 played, and now tactical shot from Carlsen. It's because of the black queen. It's trapped really, so if we can take on d7, we're good. So let's throw it in, knight f6 check, deflection, take, and now rook d7. B5, perhaps Soko was counting on this, but you still protect the rook with your queen. Queen takes a7, rook a8, and now resigned after rook takes d8. Very important, not bishop takes, because queen takes is a check. So take, take, and white might be better here, but no point, because after queen takes a7, rook a8, rook takes d8, and then that's it because rook takes a7, rook takes e8, and then the bishop on g7 will fall. Whatever black plays, king h2 is check, and f8 will fall. Can't block because take, move the king, and we're good. 
Carlsen's closest game was against Ferruja. Let's just take it from the ending. Ferruja is two pawns up in this opposite bishop ending and after king g6 he is plus six. Now let's see what happened. King c5 and now king f5 going after e5. Turns out bishop c6 is uh, winning as well. So let's go back and then we can come back here. The argument is this king has to stay on this pawn. This bishop has to stay on the g5 pawn. What's a possible variation after bishop e7? Let's just waste a move here and then back to d5. That's the key event really, because if you move the king, then e5 will drop. But if you move the bishop, notice white is now able to uh, push the pawn. However, king f5 played in the game by Ferruja still completely winning king takes king takes e5 king c5 king e6 e5 let's go here now let's see what happens right in this position he chose not to play bishop d2 because you can go king f6 and then e6 will be winning so he doesn't defend he needs to get the king round e6 king c7 and not even taking wow you don't even need to take and also maybe taking is not suitable because after king d8 King e7, king f8, maybe everything's guarded. No, it can't be guarded, what are you doing? So king g6, let's have a look at Ferruja's idea. King d8, king takes g5 now. Wow, okay, what's the difference? If you go king f7, which was the point, is to go bishop b4, bishop e7, everything's holding. He just uses a move and then comes back for the pawn, three pawns. Fallujah later lost on time, which was tragic really, but he might be completely winning in this uh, bishop ending. He is three pawns up after all. King h5, g5, king g4, and then he knocked over his king and then he flagged himself. So that is very unfortunate. After bishop d2, it's probably winning. Let's have a look. Let's get this here. If you go here, maybe it's a draw because the point is g6, you go bishop h6, can't see a way through. So bishop there, e5 maybe, maybe this is a draw. g6, same problem, maybe come round now, let's have a go. Is there a way through? Don't see it actually. So yeah, the engine gives plus one point something, but maybe there's a way for a draw to happen because when you push the g-pawn, bishop h6. So Carlson got a bonus point there, which proved key in his victory later. In the next video, I will look at Carlsen's victory against Artemiev in detail, which was a Grunfeld. I will also combine this with his game against Nepomniachtchi, also a Grunfeld, a bishop c4 with h4, very exciting. I will go into more depth.